This learning object is a production of Abu Dhabi Men's College, Center of Excellence for ICT and Learning Technology. This is part three and talks about attack examples and mitigations. So we'll talk about learning objective 1.3, which is attack examples. Uh, we have network threats. There are th uh, four types of network threats, unstructured, structured, external, and internal. Unstructured threats are unexperienced users okay, using freely, to, uh, freely downloadable tools available. They download the tool and they use the tool, but they don't really know that they are attacking the system. So uh, this type of uh, attack also can cause damage to the organization, damage to the data, whereas the user is kind of innocent. Structured threats are experienced users. They are the real uh, uh, black hat at, uh, attackers. They develop tools. They even modify tools. They develop scripts and they attack information or they attack networks to steal information or to damage information. External threats come from outside the network, whereas internal threats come from within the network. Uh, a normal measurement we do is we do it 80-20 measurement. We say 80% of networks attacks are from within the network and 20% of attacks are from outside the network. So it is uh, in today's network, it is more important to secure network from inside rather than outside. Four classes of network attacks. We have reconnaissance attacks, access attacks, denial of service attacks, and worms, virus, and Trojan horses. Specific attack types. We have packet sniffers, IP weaknesses, password attacks, DOS attacks and DDoS attacks, application layer attacks, man in the middle attacks, virus, Trojan horse, operator errors and warps. All of these are tools and methods to attack organizations. Reconnaissance is actually gathering information. It's the first ever step to attack a network. Reconnaissance is actually gathering information. Any clue about the organization which will lead me to find more information about the network is defined as reconnaissance. Uh, a simple reconnaissance example is a URL, which is whois.com. Uh, it's publicly available. You, anybody can access the URL and type a domain name or an IP address and submit a query. This query will give me all the information regarding that organization. It will give me the domain name, the IP addresses, the network administrator, his phone number, mobile number, office number, email address, even the fax number. And this is information is this information is publicly available. Now, this information cannot be made hidden. At the end of day, all organizations have to register their domain names to either internic or the service provider. And all these service providers, they share information among each other to access, to tell each other that this IP and this domain name is already registered, so that there is no duplication of IP addresses and domain name. So since the information is already shared publicly among ISPs, so people can access information and can use this information to attack, a, to attack an organization. How do we uh, mitigate a reconnaissance attack? Well, practically, we cannot really stop it. What we can do is we can monitor it. So what do we do? We install uh, an IDS uh, equipment within the network. An IDS is actually intrusion detection system which will detect information passing through itself toward the network. What it does is it looks for uh, suspicious information which is moving through it constantly and it will detect and alarm the administrator that such suspicious traffic has been moving, please take care. IDS is a weak protecting system because it alarms when the attack is already done. So it does not stop attacks. It is only a monitoring agent, it just alarms. Packet sniffer is another type of tool to attack information. Packet sniffers are freely downloadable tools available from internet. People can use this tool to sniff information moving on the network, either on the cable or on wireless networks. They can easily access information related to Telnet, FTP, SNMP, and POP. Why? Because they know that all of these services use username and password, which are transmitted as a plain text. 
How do we do uh, mitigation of packet sniffers? We need to have implementation of authentication where people use strong authentication or they can use one-time password or they also can use defense against packet sniffers. There are some tools available or there are some devices available which can tell that there is a packet sniffer running on the network because packet sniffers, they run on promiscuous mode and it can be detected by a, uh, by a uh, uh, monitoring agent. We can also uh, deploy switched network. Switch infrastructure allows me to create multiple networks on the same VLAN. So uh, information from one network does not pass to another network unless we do routing between them. So if we have a sniffing tool in one network, it may not be able to sniff information from another network. Anti-sniffer tools, we can uh, have uh, software and hardware implemented in our network to detect if there is a sniffer running. Cryptography will encrypt information on the cable or on the wireless. So if a sniffer tool is being used, it will never detect information or will not be allowed or will not allow uh, an attacker to get information which can be used to attack the network. IP spoofing is a very simple feature attackers use to uh, uh, attack an organization. It's a simple procedure to spoof an IP address. Spoofing an IP address means that your machine imitates that if it, is, it has a legal authorized MAC address or IP address. So uh, an attacker knows that there are IP addresses or the range of IP addresses used within an organization. It finds one of the IP and then when the real user switch off his computer or her computer, the attacker uses IP spoofing tools, put an IP address, which is a legal IP address, and start attacking to the organization because at the end of day, the IDS or firewalls or IPS devices protecting my network will see that it's a legal IP address requesting information and will allow that IP to transfer information within the network. And this is how attacker gains access and attack information. How do we mitigate IP spoofing? We need to have access control. Uh, we also have to implement filtering at our uh, uh, routers or firewalls where I should not allow traffic from outside world to originate with an IP address I have as an internal network. So every, anytime if an uh, attacker spoof an IP address and throws information toward my firewall or toward my organization to attack my servers, the firewall will stop it because it knows that the initial or the source address is as of internal network and does not allow information to pass. If somehow even attacker is able to pass information, I must be using a cryptography or encryption on my network so that if the information is passed, still it is secured. DOS attack, which is denial of service attack. An attacker uses tools to send huge information to a certain computer, makes the computer busy, and this traffic will jam the memory and the other resources of the computer, and this computer will stop or will stop providing services to the internal users. Uh, this is one way of stopping the services or one way of stopping the server to respond to the users. Whereas server is functional, but server is busy replying back to the attacker because attacker has sent so much of information that it is asking the acknowledgments back from the server. And this is a very easy uh, attack. Any uh, novice user can attack a server bus by generating a simple ping request to the server and requesting an uh, acknowledgement from the server.